For a second, imagine that feeling in your stomach. The nerves, the discomfort, maybe even the doubt as you walk up to do that one thing that scares you. That stretches you just a little bit further than you're ready for. And as you move towards that sort of dark, unknown, the mysterious discomfort, what's on your mind? Are you starting to rationalize? Maybe you're asking yourself, hey, why did I do this to begin with? It seemed like a good idea at one point. It seemed bold and adventurous. But now it seems like the wheels have hit the road and the narrative uh, is, is shifting in real time. So try and recreate that feeling for a second. Looking fear in the eyes. Capture what it means physically, mentally. For me, it was public speaking, right? Half a decade ago, standing backstage, palms sweating, little voice in my head saying, hey, Ed, you know, cubicle doesn't seem so bad right now, does it, genius? Maybe, you know, for you in this scenario, it's that big test that feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, everything's on the line. Maybe it's something like starting a conversation with a complete stranger, interview for a job you want starting line of a race, having the courage to speak your mind online. Maybe it's doing something your family doesn't quite get or your friends won't understand. Cutting ties with what's comfortable, a decision to be what you've always wanted to be. There's a million possibilities, right? There's a lot of fear that we dance with on a day-to-day -day basis. But in that moment, as your feet start moving, in the very direction that will bring your ideas closer to your reality. And you're hit with that same feeling, that wall that tells us something isn't quite right. That's what I want to discuss. Because it's hard to be met with this feeling and still move confidently in the same direction, right? There's cognitive dissonance there. How can something feel wrong and be right? Should there be disconnect? You know, it's funny, I, uh, I, I really enjoy reading quotes and particularly Lewis Carroll has resonated with me over the years. You know, things he said in his works, they're witty, they're funny, but they're powerful. And one in particular stood out to me. It's why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast. I just loved the concept, the idea of immersing yourself, you know, in the impossible, in, in the, the, the difficult, the thing that's not right in front of you, but sort of creating it as you go. So I got through The Looking Glass and Adventures of Alice in Wonderland, and it was an interesting read. I'm not sure I'd recommend it for everyone, but there was certainly one thing that popped out at me that I found incredibly valuable. And it was in Alice's journey holistically, right? So just she goes into this rabbit hole and the world is basically upside down. Nothing is as it was before she jumped. Nothing really makes sense. And what you see is her progression as a character as she starts continually embracing the thing that feels abnormal, upside down and weird. But with each decision to move forward, she completely redefines this insane world that wasn't particularly warm and receptive to Alice to begin with. As she stands up to a queen running around ordering executions. She navigates a world with new rules and guidelines. She transforms the boundaries that used to define reality. And what I think is valuable is that there really wasn't this boom, transformative moment where everything changes. She just keeps subtly saying yes. She keeps moving forward without knowing for sure how things will work out or unfold as if she's supposed to. And she becomes so accustomed to suppressing that feeling of fear and uneasiness that it almost becomes comical. She goes with it and becomes the author of a new story. She becomes untouchable in this world. And my point here, and for those of you not a fan of, of Alice in Wonderland, I appreciate you hanging on, but where these dots connect is that uh, it's actually a pretty simple idea. Life unfolds in a way that is unimaginable when we shift our thinking from, oh no, here comes that feeling in my stomach again, my heart's pounding, my palms are sweating, so I've wandered too far. 
When you change that to, here comes that feeling in my stomach, heart pounding, palm sweating, so here comes the beginning of something incredible, life shifts. See, it's not running from that temporary feeling of fear and discomfort, but harnessing it. It's a weapon, it's a tool, right? It fuels the rocket ship headed to the moon. It's the water that that seed of opportunity is dependent upon. And sure, it feels new and unsettling, and yeah, it's uncomfortable, but so is, as we learn, everything good. And sure, you could turn back. You could avoid that manufactured conflict, confrontation altogether, but man, you have to be okay never knowing what those peaks could have been. You have to be content imagining uh, a life of adventure and not living it. And to me, that's a much steeper price, right? Because that feeling of fear in your stomach, it's temporary, it goes away, but the, the, the feeling of knowing you walked away when life held out its hand and offered you more, that doesn't go away. And see, I look at it like this. Two things change every time you say yes. Every time you acknowledge the organized chaos and move forward anyway, you move both your internal and external worlds one step forward. Internal because life is your identity. And as has been said before, humans always follow through on who they believe they are. I've heard actors saying the most important decision they make is the shoes they put on because it lays the groundwork for how you feel. You just feel differently about yourself in clown shoes than you would in basketball shoes than you would in dress shoes. You feel different about yourself in a suit than you would in sweatpants. And this doesn't mean go reassess your wardrobe, it highlights how malleable identity is. Yeah, we follow through on who we believe we are, but the powerful thing is who we believe we are is created every single day. Every time we use fear to propel us forward, right? Your subconscious goes, okay, that's who I am. Someone who does the uncomfortable thing, someone who is okay with fear, that's me, right? And that's the internal foundation that means everything. That's how identity is constructed. And if you stack that up with action every single day, you won't even be able to recognize yourself. That's the internal transformation. Then there's the external transformation. Every time you push through fear, you level up, not significantly, right? You aren't immediately transformed. In fact, sometimes you don't even notice. But the truth is, after you say yes, after you take that step, you're fractionally further than a few minutes earlier. Your relative ceiling is now the floor and it's time to take another step. This is how you create distance over time. So when you hear the word fear, let's rewire that reaction. Let's change how we think about it. Because it's not a monster in the closet. It's not some demon staring you in the face. No, it's a ticket to something more, something to be embraced and coveted. It's the next little step in your journey and why when most of the world bows down to that feeling of discomfort or instability and stays the same, you will have moved forward. Not in a single leap, but a step. A step that over time will become the reason that at some point, when you look over your shoulder, you'll find a life, a world, a reality that is unrecognizable in the context of where you began. It's why fear is not to be avoided or even tolerated, but sought out as the single variable that puts a pulse in your aspirations, gives hope to your dreams. The ideal life is not predicated on the avoidance of fear, but the ability to harness and capitalize on its power.